Welcome to Black Gumbo Gardening Food and Family Adventure. We've changed our name a little bit so we can broaden our scope to uh, things we like to do. Hope you don't mind. Well, it's uh, officially June now and it is officially hot. And the garden's not doing so well in, in some areas, in other areas it's excelling. So let's take a look around I'll show you what we got going. Well, you can see we've got all these uh, Roma tomatoes coming in. Uh, this is what I like about this time of year is you get tons of tomatoes, you get them all at once. Uh, but right behind me you can see over there, the uh, cucumbers are not doing so well. And let's go take a look why. These cucumber leaves have uh, powdery mildew. Lots of them, uh, and you can see they're not as intensely green as they were. They're kind of yellow. Uh, production has so somewhat fallen off. Here's a good example. You can see uh, powdery mildew, that, that gray on there. And these cucumbers have basically given up. Uh, we're about to be done. I'll actually start pulling these out probably this week. You can see over there, we've got some yellow leaves, a lot of dead leaves in there. I got my uh, last harvest today because what's still on there and uh, ready to be harvested is uh, filled with cucumber worms. The, the, uh, the pests finally found my cucumbers, and so we're, we're gonna count this one done. You can see, cucumbers are eating up with worms, the ants are getting in there. Uh, this plant is pretty much done. Here you can see signs of pests. Well, here's a perfect example of uh, cucumber worms. When you pick a cucumber and you see that those tailings there, it's almost like when you, when you you dig a mine in the mountains, like a gold mine, you take all the rubble and you throw it out and it forms what they call a tailings mound. That's a tailings of that boring worm in there. We're gonna go take a look at this worm. Check this dude out, let me, let me cut this open. There is our boring worm. See that guy right there? He's not happy, is he? That is not a happy worm. Now look at that. This is what gets into your cucumbers. This is what eats them up. And they are a larva. It depends, there are several different kinds of larva that get in. Larva of the cucumber beetle. <clears throat> There's larva of a couple of different kinds of, um, of moths as well. But this guy has the ability to spin silk. If I drop him, he'll, see there's a, I don't know that you can see, there it is. There it is. These guys are silk spinners. Here's another one. You can see he's hollowed out the core of that cucumber. I'm going to crack it open. I've sliced all around. Let's go ahead and crack it open. And there you can see the worm who is not happy about being disturbed. That's pretty nasty, huh? You can also see that in the summertime when watering is inconsistent, when the fruit is developing, it uh, develops at an inconsistent rate. So you get these weird shapes get these cucumbers that trail off because they're not getting consistent water. Okay, we've got a pretty good sized bed here that I'm going to fill with um, cow peas and I'm also going to let these uh, squash plants uh, produce there and then we'll put cow peas here as well. The cow peas will carry us over the summer. There's the Swiss chard and the perpetual spinach and I've been harvesting this perpetual spinach, this stuff here, uh, last several days. Uh, a good two handfuls of it for my juicing. I'm, uh, I enjoy juicing these greens and I add a little bit of Swiss chard to it as well. This is good stuff. I'm really happy that these are doing well in the summer. I just keep them watered and, and they seem to do fine. Over here my onions are still doing fine. Like I said when I planted them, I don't expect them to bulb too much, but I do get some green onions out of them. Well, here's where my beets were. We harvested all the beets because I'm juicing them and they're coming in very helpful and very handy, saving me some money. So I had about, what is that, four square feet of beets there. Tomato jungle, still producing. Lots and lots of tomatoes hidden in there. And I like the fact that it's a jungle because it hides some of them from the birds. And I'll show you what I mean. Right here, these are my fruits that the birds got or the worms got. So you can see. There's been quite a bit of activity by the pests in my garden, and so these will, uh, these will eventually find their way into the compost, and hopefully some of these will come up volunteer next year, and I'll be able to, I'll be able to transfer them into pots and raise them in containers. I've been harvesting bell peppers 
I use these in my juicing too. And because I pruned them, you can see I'm getting a whole lot of flowers. I'm getting a whole lot of fruit. These things just keep producing. Uh, I'm harvested off this one today. I've got uh, four to five peppers on each plant and more coming in. So the peppers are doing well. There's a bunch of habaneros down there. Here's Sam's three sisters garden. We lost the two sisters, but kept the first sister corn. We've got some ears coming in here, one there, one there, maybe a few others. And, uh, yeah, hopefully that'll uh, give Sam something to be proud of. You see we mulched this bed just to retain moisture. Over here we've got some watermelon. This was our other three sisters garden. And for some reason it didn't, it didn't grow. It didn't grow as well as that one. I suspect it is because it's in, uh, well, I don't really have any ideas, any theories, but the watermelon seems to like it, so we're happy. We're going to thin these out once we see which ones are the strongest. And uh, This is the Charlotte Gray, a classic old world watermelon that you don't see around too much. Big old spitting sized seeds. We hope to get some watermelons. Grape vines are doing well. I'll show you some things on these grape vines. These are muscadine grapes, and so the clusters are actually very small. And this is a second year plant. I'm not really supposed to expect any fruit on the second year, but uh, there's fruit in here. Little tiny little clusters here and there. There's some right there of uh, grapes. These are gonna be about ping pong sized grapes. You can see my potted tomatoes have a lot of damage on here from uh, severe weather. While they still produce, tomatoes uh, surprise me with their resilience. Uh, the, really, these are mostly done. Uh, the heat is, is too much for the potted tomatoes, while the tomato jungle over there can handle the heat because it's got deep, deep uh, soil. Now, these in the pots, especially these dark, uh, these uh, orange pots, these Home Depot pots, those really do absorb the heat, and uh, the fluctuation in temperature really stresses these plants out. So I get a good harvest out of them especially the Romas. Romas actually do really well in these containers. I'm pleased with Romas, but uh, yeah, they're, they're almost done. Down here is my baby bok choy. I've been feeding the snails with this one, uh, but I'll be harvesting these soon so that I can, uh, so I can juice these. They've actually stood up pretty well. They grew quite nicely in those cloth pots and I'm impressed. I'll be doing baby bok choy again. Let me show you my figs. I got tons of figs coming in. Figs are just, uh, Incredible. Heat's really getting to the German chamomile, but it just keeps on producing. I got all these flowers. Uh, my little German chamomile container in the house is uh, full now, so I have to get another one if I want to keep harvesting this. That's the garden. That's the summer garden. It's about to change a lot pretty soon. Not going to look the same. That's the nature of gardening. It's always in transition. Thanks for joining us today on Black Gumbo. Glad you were here. Uh, please leave a comment, ask questions, uh, tell us what we're doing wrong, what we're doing right. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't, and we'll see you next time. Take care.